um, is based on the cooperation between the uh, Helmut Schmidt University in Hamburg and the Technical University in Dresden. This work focuses on the um, development of a surface plasma resonance based uh, fiber optical sensor. Um, I guess most of you people or a few of you people are familiar with uh, the method of surface plasma resonance uh, sensing, uh, which is uh, quite a sensitive method to detect specific biochemical molecules and which is therefore uh, an interesting candidate for medical and pharmaceutical and also for environmental application. Our work on the fiber optic probe is <coughs> aiming towards uh, minimization of the necessary analyte volume, uh, which could lead to the design of a portable point of care device that might look like this micro pipette, or uh, to the design of highly integrated lab and chip systems where you have a large number of these fiber optical probes that are emulated uh, sim uh, simultaneously. Of course, we are not the first ones uh, to think about a fiber optical SDR sensor. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we did have a new idea, uh, which is shown here. Uh, our sensor is based on a, a standard single mode glass fiber, which exhibits a thin gold layer at the tip. This gold layer has a length about 3 millimeters and a thickness around 30 to 50 nanometers, and is in contact with the analyte medium. Next to the sensing area, we find a uh, long period fiber grading. This is a periodic uh, refractive index modulation in the core of the fiber, which allows to couple optical power from the fundamental core mode guided in the core uh, to a certain cladding mode that is guided at the interface uh, to the surrounding medium. The uh, propagation constant or effective refractive index of this core mode um, is determined by the period of the fiber grading, which is designed in a way that the evanescent field, uh, evanescent field of the cladding mode will excite the phase plasma waves uh, at the surface of the gold coating, which then leads in turn uh, to a strong field concentration of the cladding mode on the metal surface, which leads uh, to a um, uh, higher attenuation of the cladding mode and also to a significant change of the effective refractive index of the cladding mode. The both uh, latter parameter, uh, parameters strongly depend on the uh, surrounding refractive index. So therefore, this is actually a refractive index sensor, which, however, is sensitive enough to detect uh, biomolecular binding processes which take place at these lateral areas. If you now think about to design uh, the sensor towards high sensitivity, you uh, got to gain information about the effective refractive index and attenuation of these cladding modes and uh, their dependency not only to the surrounding refractive index, also to uh, the wavelength and uh, thickness and permittivity of the gold layer. Um, think about modulation. Uh, you will uh, visit uh, common numerical methods first, but um, we are facing two major problems. The first one is that the XPDR induced loss of the cladding modes leads to uh, complex results which inhibit uh, the identification of certain cladding modes, especially uh, for our um, cylindrical fiber geometry. And the second important restriction is that uh, the 125 micrometers diameter of our cladding is relatively big in comparison to our working wavelengths, which is in the visible range, and also to the thickness of our gold layer. So in order to ship around these problems, we thought of a stripped down model, which focuses on a few uh, relevant parameters instead of uh, giving a complete description of the cladding mode. This is done uh, uh, with a planar approximation using a symmetric uh, slab waveguide with a bidirectional gold coding. And also it's a planar model. It is able to emulate uh, fiber cladding modes, in particular HE1X <coughs> fiber cladding modes, which are typically excited uh, by uh, long period fiber gradings. Input parameters for our models are the thickness and permittivity of the gold layer and the thickness and permittivity of the cladding. Having these parameters, we can calculate uh, the complex reflection coefficient of the interface between our planar waveguide and the gold coding. This is done in dependency of uh, the effective refractive index, the wavelengths, and the surrounding index. Uh, for uh, two complementary polarization, meaning 
transverse magnetic polarization, which is known to be the SPR efficient polarization, but also for transverse electric polarization, which is due to the fact that we want to emulate uh, these uh, HE1X hybrid cladding modes. If we now calculate the phase angle of this complex value, we get the phase shift uh, of light, which is totally reflected at this interface. And together with the uh, diameter of the fiber cladding, we can calculate uh, the effective refractive index of this hybrid mode by applying the standing wave condition for our planar structure. Taking these values to calculate the reflection coefficient and uh, then calculating the absolute square value, we get the reflectivity of this uh, waveguide gold interface, which is our second parameter. And in order to give you an idea what kind of information these both parameters um, give us in regards to the phase plasma resonance, I've plotted uh, these two graphs. What we see is the effective refractive index and the reflectivity independent of the surrounding refractive index. And for the effective refractive index, which again is the propagation constant uh, of our cladding mode, we see a clear shift at uh, a certain surrounding refractive index. This is where SPR is taking place. And here we also find uh, the lowest reflectivity, which is correlated uh, with uh, the SPR-induced loss and field concentration. So now if you want to calculate the absolute values of the attenuation, which is crucial for our sensor, uh, we got to um, do um, supportive experiments in order to uh, determine scaling factors for the attenuation. This is done uh, with the following setup. At first sight, it looks a little bit like our ZEN setup, but it has one major difference. Uh, the uh, fiber grating and the gold coating are here at the same place. That means the SPR-induced change of the cladding mode behavior will lead to a change uh, uh, of the LBG coupling, which can be observed in the transmission spectra of the uh, fiber grating. These transmission spectra are characterized by a notch at a certain wavelength, which is determined by the period of the grading and the effective refractive index of the cladding mode. And what we here see uh, are transmission spectra which were acquired for different uh, surrounding refractive indices, which were uh, adjusted with different solutions of certain chloride. And there is uh, a clear change, uh, refractive index dependent change to this transmission spectra, which is quantified uh, with three parameters, which are the resonance wavelength, the minimal transmission at the resonance wavelengths and the full width at half maximum. So now we take these three measured parameters and use an algorithm that is taken from coupled mode theory under the assumption of a weak grading and coupling into cladding modes uh, in order to fit these uh, experimental values. First of all, we need the parameters uh, of our fiber grading, which is the length and the period. Then we need the effective refractive indices of the fundamental modes and uh, our cladding mode. And these parameters give us uh, the detuning factor of the grading, which directly controls uh, the resonance wavelength. So there is no scaling factor here. However, we need a scaling factor if we want to implement uh, the losses of the cladding mode, modes, which is done uh, by the interaction length of the cladding mode with the grating. That means if we have a lossy cladding mode, we will have an interaction. Or it can happen that uh, the interaction length with the grating is lower than the actual grating length. Um, this would lead to um, an increased uh, transmission minimum, so uh, uh, a shallower tip, and also to a um, broadening of the resonance. And this is where we fit our this interaction length to, so we fit it to the full width at half maximum by uh, scaling the reflectivity with a certain factor and calculating this uh, interaction length. And the next step, we um, correct uh, the um, residual deviation of the minimal transmission by adjusting the coupling coefficient, which is also done uh, by scaling the reflectivity with a certain factor. So the outcome of this FIT algorithm is the attenuation uh, of the cladding mode uh, depending on the surrounding refractive index and also on information about our gold permittivity. Um, this is important because we apply very thin layers uh, to our gold fiber and an electrode plating process and this leads to gold layers uh, which have a porous characteristics which with uh, thickness dependent effective permittivity. And um, therefore we have to characterize the permittivity of the gold layer actually every time we change the plating process. Um, fortunately this is 
quite simple as the uh, real part and the imaginary part of the permittivity uh, react complementary uh, uh, on our uh, fit parameters. Uh, how I mean this is uh, shown in these uh, graphs. What we see are the measured fit parameters, uh, which are the blue diamonds and uh, simulated curves uh, for different permittivities. Uh, the blue curve, uh, which fits uh, our measurements the best, is a permittivity of minus 8.5, uh, real part and imaginary part minus 2.5. And if we now uh, change the real part, like for the green curve, you see there is a shift of the whole curve, so we are shifting the SPR um, location for the simulation with the real part, and the imaginary part more or less controls uh, the slope of the curve, so this is the parameter uh, we have to change in order to fit the imaginary part of um, our gold permittivity. Summarizing my talk, I presented to you a novel fiber optical biosensor based on the surface plasma resonance of a single cladding mode. Uh, I've presented a planar model uh, regarding the effective refractive index and attenuation of the involved uh, HD1X cladding modes. Uh, our research showed that if we have an optimum gold layer, we can reach an attenuation of 99% after 5 millimeter uh, uh, gold plating. Uh, this planar model was supported with uh, LPG adjusted experiments with gave, uh, which gave us uh, scaling factors and uh, the complex gold permittivity. So, finally, I'd like to thank my colleagues in Hamburg and Dresden and the German Research Foundation for funding. And I, of course, I thank you for your attenuation, uh, attenuation, <laughs> for, uh, for your uh, attention. And I hope there's a few seconds left for questions. Thank you.